is already gone from us. So I'm going to attempt to be quick tonight. I, I won't make any promises, but I'm going to share something with you that was, you know, shared, shared with me recently, and it was so powerful. Um, I feel it on my heart to share with you tonight. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. John 15, verses 1 through 8. You say amen when you got it. <coughs> amen. John 15, 1 through 8 reads, Jesus is saying, I am the true vine, and my father is a husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it. That's your reward. Praise God. He purgeth it. That it may bring forth more fruit. So now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. He said in verse 4, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Everybody say nothing. Verse 6, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire. They are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. Somebody say much fruit. So that ye may be my disciples. Today I want to talk to us about being fruitful. Being fruitful. Put your Bibles down. Let's pray that the Lord have his way in this place. Come on, let's lift the Holy Ghost prayer up, up to the Lord right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you here tonight, Lord God, that you called us out of darkness, Lord, and into your marvelous light. We praise you right now, Lord God, for you are great and greatly to be praised, oh God. Your name is hallowed all above the earth, Lord Jesus. We pray here tonight, Lord God, that you would help us, oh God. Help me to preach your word, Lord God. Let the anointing of the Spirit, Lord God, destroy every yoke of the enemy tonight, oh God. Bring us knowledge, Lord. Bring us wisdom, oh God, and bring us into revelation, Lord that we might know and understand, Lord. Uh, Lord, we bind up every spirit that is unlike you tonight, Lord, uh, and we forbid it to operate, Lord God, uh, and we lose your power and your presence among this place, Lord God, uh, to accomplish your will here tonight, Lord. Uh, we'll be careful, Lord, to give you all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Uh, somebody clap your hands and shout amen to God. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Talk about being fruitful tonight. There are many analogies and metaphors used in the Bible, and one of the most common among them is fruit. The Bible talks about the concept of fruit in many different places. It talks about harvest, fruit, reaping, sowing, and all of these are to illustrate a kingdom principle. It is my belief that all creation mirrors spiritual concepts. As a matter of fact, David wrote in Psalm 19, uh, verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. I don't think it's accident that God created the trees to be trees, to bear fruit. I don't think it's accident that he created the oceans and the winds to operate like they do. And I don't think it's an accident that he created us to produce and to reproduce. Praise God. I believe that these things that happen in nature are really kingdom principles. As a matter of fact, we can say that with a surety because Jesus would oftentimes teach parables using these natural principles that we understand to illustrate a kingdom reality. That's why they are good teaching methods, because he takes something that you already know and understand and shows you how it applies to the kingdom of God. Jesus is a wonderful teacher. He doesn't talk above you. He take, took very simple principles and concepts and uses it to show us things related to the kingdom of God. There's all kinds of scriptures related to fruit, reaping and sowing, harvest. You probably know some of them. He who sows sparingly will also reap. He who sows bountifully will also reap. Be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man that shall he also. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall reap life everlasting. This is a popular one. You shall know them by their 
Okay, do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bring forth what? But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. He used concepts of fruit that we could understand and used it to show us things related to the kingdom. That last one is very, very simple. You can't reproduce what you're not. You'd be surprised how many people try <laughs> and wonder why there's evil fruit coming from them. <laughs> Oh, I don't know how this happened. Well, I'll tell you how it happened. The apple don't far, far. Praise God. And that's not in the Bible, by the way. Don't go quoting that. Say the Bible says. The Bible didn't say that. Praise God. Amen. We said that. But it's true. You can't reproduce anything that you are. And, of course, the parable of the sower and the seed is all about fruit. In our opening scripture, Jesus uses the example of vines and branches and fruit. And this is not a parable, but it's a lesson Take it from the natural process of a vine that bears fruit. He says, I am the true vine. My father or the spirit is the husbandman. The husband is man is the one that's responsible for the vine. A similar picture to Adam in the garden when he said, I don't want you to just sit there looking at all this. I want you to take care of it. I want you to dress it and keep it, look after it. So he says, my father's the husband. I'm the vine, but you're the branches that come, come out of that vine. He said, without me, you can't, I got to abide in you, and you got to abide in me, because that branch is just a smaller portion of that vine. It gets all of its nutrients from the vine. It gets all of its substance from the vine. So you could say that the vine is in the branch, but you could also reverse it and say, if that branch cuts itself off from that vine, there ain't no fruit growing. So the branch has to be in the vine, and the vine has to be in. It's all one tree, one connected tree. Praise God. He uses this to say, without me, you can do nothing. And even more detrimental, if you will, he said, well, what gardener would look at a branch that's not bearing any fruit and keep it there? Not the point of the branch. The whole point of the branch is that there should be fruit on the end of that thing. And when somebody comes around, they can pick at that fruit and consume it and get nourishment off of the fruit. That's the purpose of the tree. So if there's a branch that doesn't have any fruit, any wise gardener would go by, okay, well, let's cut it off. It's got all the nutrients wasted. Cut it off. But even further, the ones that do bear fruit eventually... You got to prune that thing, snip it back a little bit, and so it can bear more fruit. So obviously the Jews knew what they were doing when they came to garden. Praise God. So today we're going to look at what it means to bear, bear fruit, what it means to be fruitful. We're going to learn from the Bible what the fruit actually is and why must we have it. First of all, what is the fruit that I'm supposed to be producing? I've heard everything. Oh, it's souls. So if you're not winning souls, you're not fruitful. You know, it's, it's money, finances, resources. And, and that's not really what the Bible says. The Bible is very explicit about what the fruit is. Galatians 5, and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Everybody say love. love. Are y'all with me here tonight? Yeah. It's not going to be boring, I promise. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Can't legislate it. There's nothing wrong with it. There's no law against it. Praise God. This is the fruit that we are supposed to be reproducing or producing. These things should be growing off of you. Praise God. These are mistakenly thought to be positive character traits that a person possesses, but they are not. These are fruits of the Spirit and only come by the Spirit. Just because you're a nice person doesn't mean you're kind. Because nice is fake. The preacher recently said kind comes from the word kindred, which means really you treat someone like family. Not just an empty smile. And pleasantries. Praise the Lord. I really don't like you, don't, don't want anything to do with you, don't want to be around you, but praise the Lord. Uh, amen, it's a difference. 
These are fruits of the Spirit, and so they only come by the Spirit. Now, we got to be clear, this is also not the evidence that you have received the Spirit of God. The evidence is clearly defined in Scripture as speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. The fruit of the Spirit is evidence that the Spirit that you received is allowed to work and produce fruit in your life. I can give you a seed right now, but that doesn't mean there's going to be any fruit coming from it. That seed has to be put into good ground. It must be watered. It must be cultivated. And eventually, it will produce fruit if the environment that it's placed in is correct. Are you making sense? So we can't say, well, I got love, so I must have the spirit. No, 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 no. I got, I, and, and one good circumstance will show you that you don't love as well as you thought you love. And we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. So these are not evidence that someone has received the spirit. It's evidence that the spirit is being allowed to work in their life. Praise God. And in the natural, so is in the spiritual. Once that seed is planted, it takes time for the fruit to grow. And over that time, that fruit, that seed must be in the right environment. It must be watered. It must be taken care of. It must be cultivated. You got to keep all the weeds around it from sucking the resources away from it. You got to make sure it's in the light the appropriate amount of times. You got to make sure it's got the right amount of shade, praise God. You got to make sure it's got the right amount of nutrients. It's very, very hard, actually, to have a plant grow and reproduce fruit, praise God. So it's more than just receiving the Spirit to say, I'm producing. That's why there can be people that have received this Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, baptized in Jesus' name, but they're as mean as dogs. Unforgiving, full of bitterness and hatred and wrath and malice and all of that. And you're thinking, my God, I heard you speak in tongues. What's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. That's no fruit. There's no fruit. And so we learn this principle in the parable of the sower and the seed. I'm not going to read it today because we don't have much time. But Jesus said, essentially, there's a guy, that, there's a man that goes around, he's sowing seed. One goes by the wayside. One seed falls to rocky ground, one falls among thorns, and one falls on good ground. Four different types of ground, same seed. Four different types of ground, same seed. And in that seed possesses all the potential to produce a hundredfold fruit. But the difference in outcomes has nothing to do with the seed. It all has all to do with the environment that the seed is placed into. This is why Jesus said, if you abide in me and I abide, just because you got a seed doesn't mean that there's going to be some fruit. You got to continue to abide. Yes, 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 yes. Somebody say, I got to abide. That's not visiting once in a while. That's not praying only on Sunday when we come to church. Come on, somebody. That's not just even when we come to corporate prayer. You must abide. Praise God. Somebody say, I must abide. See, this separates. Hmm. This separates the Sunday-only Christians from the people that are really serving and living for God. How do you know? Because you'll see their fruit. And you'll be able to eat and consume that fruit. Talk about that in a second. That makes sense when Paul says in Romans 8, 13 and 14, For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are here, it is led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. Again, it's not enough just to have the Spirit. Is it leading you? Or are you leading yourself? <laughs> I came across my news feed. Uh, they were, people were reacting to some TikTok videos. And this one transitioning person uh, going from one gender to the other. Whole face was tattooed. Even her, I think, eyeballs were tattooed. She said, I'm a Satanist, but that don't mean I worship Satan. What that really means is that I worship myself as God. <laughs> That's what the Satanists do. They don't worship Satan. They worship themselves. Ooh, praise God. Last days, lovers of themselves. More than lovers of. So lots of times you're thinking the devil trying to know. No, the devil just wants you to get you to do you. That's right. That's it. Mm. But you're a son of God if you're led by the spirit of God only then will we bear fruit so how then do I bear fruit this is what Jesus said John 15 4 and 5 
abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. The only way to produce this fruit is to abide in him. This is huge because many people try to bear them, produce this fruit without abiding and wonder why it's not working. Why can't I love unconditionally? Why can't I forgive unconditionally? Why can't I have patience? Why am I so irritable? Praise God. Why is it that I have no joy? You thought all of this was just your personality character traits. And you're trying to produce that fruit through your flesh. The problem is, is that your flesh warreth against the spirit. See, you can't just will yourself to love somebody. Because will comes from the power of your flesh. You can't just will peace into your life. Will comes from the power of your flesh. You can't just will joy into your life. Don't you know you can't even forgive somebody through the power of your flesh? I'm having a hard time forgiving this. I can tell you why. Galatians 5, 16, 21, 16 through 11, and through 21. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives, that you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. I'm in the NLT. The sinful nature wants to do evil. It what is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. Look at that. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature wants. And that's your flesh. Everybody say, my flesh. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your, look at this, good intentions. I know I'm supposed to forgive, but I can't do it. Why? Because I'm trying to do it through my. This is why when people come to me and say, Pastor, I'm having no this, I say, have you prayed? What you mean? That's not, yes, it is. Because you're not going to be able to produce the fruit that you need right now until you abide in you can't just will yourself. You can't just will it. Will comes from the power of your flesh. And even if you do will it, God didn't do it, you're going to get the glory for it. Now we got pride. I will this. No, 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 no. Jesus made it very, very plain. And look at this. There, these two forces are constantly fighting against each other, so you're not free to carry out your good intentions. Verse 18, but when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. Verse 19, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Look, sinful, in, excuse me, sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, my God, jealousy, outburst of Selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. That's what the result of your flesh will get you. So you already know if you're in your flesh, if your behavior is on this list. And the power of your will comes from your flesh. That's why, my God, that's why we got to abide in, in him. In him. Not, 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 a, not a every now and again pray. I got to stay there. That's what abide means. It, means. it means to stay or to remain. Because it's only when I remain that the fruit of that spirit, praise God, will begin to grow in my life. Don't just visit him every once in a while. Abide. This is why a life of prayer and fasting is so necessary. Without it, you won't be able to love unconditionally. You won't be able to forgive unconditionally. You won't be able to have peace that passes all understanding and joy unspeakable and full of glory. There will be no patience. There will be no kindness. There will be no goodness in your life. Am I a bad person? No. You just need to abide in Christ. 
pray. Seek his face. God, I need you. Not just because I need provision. Not just because I need a new car. Not just because I need healing. Not just because I need a miracle. But I need love, oh God. I need to be able to love my enemies. I need to be able to forgive them. I need to be able to bless them and pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. I can't do that in this flesh. I need God. I need God. We need God. I said, I need God. Oh, praise God. So this is evident. We have this misunderstanding sometimes that we are able to conjure up this fruit by our own will. Misunderstanding that we're able to conjure this up by simply just being. <laughs> Everybody ever had a hard time forgiving somebody? I just don't know how. Abide. Abide in him. And that fruit will begin to, begin to grow. And it's going to be supernatural. And you'll know it's going to be supernatural because you know how you used to do it. <laughs> and, you, and, and once you abide in him, the nutrient, it comes without effort almost. It's like, well, bless God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We must abide. It won't be your willpower that allowed you to love and forgive, that allowed you to have peace and joy. And patience. It will be the power of the Spirit of God working in you. And when that happens, God will get the glory. Because you will know, I used to do something. I would have cussed you upside down until Friday. And it's Sunday. <laughs> I would have swung and done this. And I would have... Hmm. I read it again. John 15, 4 and 5, abide in me and I as you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. So that fruit that God is expecting in is not just winning souls. The souls will come. You know why they'll come? Because they'll see your fruit. By this shall all men know. You're my disciples. That you have, look, look, that's the fruit. That's the mainest one. Mainest. I made that up today. Praise God. Somebody coined that. We'll make a shirt. The mainest one. Hallelujah. <laughs> Saying it's money in these t-shirts nowadays. Everybody got a t-shirt now. Praise God. So just, you know, I'll, I'll take 10% and give it to God. Thank you, Jesus. That's the main one. It's love. Even Paul said faith, hope, charity, but the greatest of this is charity. It's love. What does it profit a man if I, don't, if I do all this stuff and, and, have, and don't have love? You understand all mysteries, faith to move mountains and all of that, speaking all kinds of tongues and all of that. But if I don't have love, even if I give to charity and I have not love, that's the main one. And fortunately, God is love. I'm talking about that love that you don't deserve kind of love. I'm talking about that this person is the furthest from deserving any sort of love in my life whatsoever. They betrayed me. They talked about me. They spit on me. They've hurt me. They caused pain in my life. Love. The love that looks and says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The love that says, lay not this sin to their charge as I'm being stoned by the very people. How many people would look at somebody busting you in the head with a rocker and say, Lord, don't lay not this sin at their charge. Don't hold them accountable for this action when they come before the judge. How many would do? You can't do that out of your flesh. I dare you to try. No, don't try. That's going to be a disaster. Don't try. Don't try. And here it is, husbands. Love your wives. It's Christ. That means I must abide. Woo. And when I figured that out, Brother Reggie, my marriage started improving like that. You know why? Because love is not irritable. Him to help us out today. Love is not boastful. Read Christ, first Corinthians 3. It's not proud. Not demanding of its own way. Keeps no record of being, who in the world can do that? Does anybody have that naturally? So how am I supposed to love my wife the way God wants me to love her if I'm in my flesh? That's why I stress men, y'all need to be praying. Ooh. Mm. Everybody's a couple. 
Yes, sir. I get it. I get it. Because that's a hard one to fulfill. Jesus came to save his bride. His bride sent him to the cross. Come on up here. We're going to hang you up real quick. That was his bride doing that. Spitting on him. That was his bride doing that. Ripped the hair out of his beard. That was his bride doing that. Crown of thorns. That was his bride. And he didn't say nay. And we want to give people a piece of our mind just because, you know, we was late. You, you, you pick whatever situation. It don't matter. The point is you won't be able to produce that if you're not abiding in Jesus. Daily basis, prayer, reading his word. You feel yourself getting carnal. Fast and pray, God, I need you. God, I need you. I don't, I'm not asking for the merit of the stuff. I want your character. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ. My God. So, why fruit? Well, look at what Jesus said. John 13, 35, 34 to 35. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Why is this new? Well, because Jesus is new. In the flesh, at least. In the Old Testament, they had no walking example of love. God is love, so that was love right there. But they had a physical example. We have the gospel to tell us what love really looks like. So it's new. By this, verse 35, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have what? Love one to another. Jesus is our example. He's the vine. And he expects us to have this fruit growing off of us that people can see. And what is fruit for? It's food. It's food. You eat fruit. Don't eat the wrong fruit. You know, we don't want to go Eve's way. Praise God. <laughs> it's fruit. Even the first sin had fruit in it. You know, Don't eat of the fruit of this. So it's fruit. So you look at the example. What do people do? Florida, you, people see mangoes. They go crazy. Yes, sir. My next door neighbor has a mango tree, and the mango started falling. Man, I had cars outside of my house every other day. Knocking on that lady's door like, can we come get some of your mangoes? <laughs> I grew up in Indiana. In my backyard, we had an apple tree, we had a pear tree, and we had a cherry tree. Two apple trees. And that fruit would fall, and it stunk. It got to rot, and I used to hate cutting the grass because we had two dogs back there, too. So it was just a hot mess, literally. <laughs> <laughs> but my friends would come over. We'd just go out back and just want an apple here. Just make sure there were no wormholes in it. That was the best sour apples. They don't got nothing on them. What they call them? Granny apples? What are they called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Granny apples. They got nothing on those. These are the real first real non-GMOs. <laughs> <laughs> Pears, we go right off there and just pick off of it. So guess what? Jesus is divine. You're the branches. That means all day people should see your fruit. And they walk off and pick some love off of you. Come and get some of your peace. Joy. Ooh, that's my favorite one. I like that joy fruit right there. Let me get some of that joy. Praise God. Faith. Fruit hanging on you. You're in Walmart with a big old faith tree just walking by you. People come by, you pick some of your fruit cash register lady that gets on your nerves and you, she's sitting there getting on your nerves and you're just blessing her she's picking your fruit and when you're depleted you go back to the vine that's why the temple is not by speaking in tongues or carrying around a big bible or playing a gospel it's when somebody sees that you forgive unconditionally and when somebody sees that you love and when somebody sees that you're humble, when somebody sees that you have patience, people are watching you then. Got your eyes on you. Ooh, okay, they say they say. Let's see. What fruit? You shall know them. So we're to be a living, walking vine of nourishment. In the natural world, fruit contains antibodies and antioxidants and vitamins. All of which are healthy for you. 
fights off all kinds of diseases. So it's a natural, so it is in the spiritual. Because this world's got its own fruit. <laughs> own toxic mindsets. So how do I fight it off? You need to go get you some fruit. Get that vitamin C in that system. Get rid of this cold. Make sure my immune system is built up. Come on, y'all know. Don't act stupid. Y'all know about the fruit. Praise God. Mm. Also, the seed of the fruit is in itself. Genesis 1, 11 through 12. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after its kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. So in the first chapter of Genesis, God establishes a foundation. You can't reproduce what you're not. The seed is in itself. He reproduces after his kind. So people say, well, it's apples and oranges. Not going to get apples from oranges. You're not going to get good from evil. That's the first principle. The second principle is that the seed of a thing is in itself, meaning that that fruit has the ability to reproduce. So if I love, I'm going to get what back? If somebody consumes love for me, if that seed finds the right ground, love will begin to grow in them. This is why Paul said in Galatians 6, 7 through 10, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Listen, look at this. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap if you're always mean, guess what you're going to get back? If you're unforgiving, guess what God already told you? If you don't forgive, then he's not forgiving you. That, that's Praise God. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. What did Jesus say? Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain. It's going to come back. The seed is in itself. My God, that's why the quickest way to end or to squash something between somebody is to love because it's going to come back to you. Yes. Got a couple people to receive that. Forgive. It'll come back to you. Be patient. It'll come back to you. The seed is in the fruit. Praise God. Be kind. It'll come back to you. Be gentle. It'll come back to you. Have joy and it'll come back. The seed is in the fruit. It's in the fruit. So when somebody picks at that and gets a little joy from you, guess what they get? They get joy. Praise God. People see you being patient. Guess what? They might be patient themselves. They see you love unconditionally. They might love themselves. Hallelujah, Jesus. seed is in itself. And if that seed finds good ground, guess what it's going to do? Yes, sir. It's going to reproduce. Yes, sir. That's where the soul's aspect comes in. Jesus said, they're going to know you're my disciples by your love. By your love. And when they see that, they'll catch it. It'll reproduce in them. Yes, sir. It'll reproduce in them. Yes, sir. It'll reproduce in them. My God. One of the best concept I ever learned was you don't have to fight your battles. Just give it over to Jesus. There's one scripture Paul was talking about in Romans. He said, do pray for them. He said, feed them. Give them drink in that you're reaping coals on their head. Does God see you love? Oh, thank you, Jesus. See you forgiving? Not getting your own vengeance? That fruit's going to come back to you. Because the very person that you might want to get vengeance on, God might be trying to say, just look at Paul. <laughs> he was consenting to Stephen's death. Had no right to be in the church whatsoever. God showed him mercy. And the church wasn't really with it at first. It was Barnabas that took him in and said, come on in. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. 
We got to love. Not this emotional feeling love that the world says is love. But that agape, unconditional. Unconditional love. Whether you cuss me out, whether you spit on me, whether you block my phone calls, whether you, I love you. You can't even really say it. It's got to be shown. Ooh, patience, my God. Some of us got short fuses like that. It's a spark. Boom! An outburst of anger right there. But get you some patience from God. Stop praying for the stuff you really don't need and pray, Lord, give me this. Give me patience. Endure difficult people and difficult situations. And my God, thank you, Jesus. Cream of that seed is in the soil. And we are the example. This is what Jesus said, you're the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth. Let your light so shine before men. That's walking around. Big old, big old fruit trees, brother William. Big old fruit trees. Hallelujah. And then when that fruit is produced, we're purged so that we can produce more. John 15, 2, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. What is that fruit? Not, not, not that you're not winning souls. That you, you don't love. You don't love people. No joy. No peace. No faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Patience. No kindness. No goodness. I'm not talking about your natural characteristics, the stuff that you can conjure up. It's vain and empty. I'm talking about in the toughest of situations. In the hardest of trying times. That's how you know what your fruit is. When God will allow you to go through some tough situations. Some hard times. Just to show you what you're really made of. Show us. I have to abide in him. How do I forgive people that have done terrible things? Abide in him. How do I love? from having outbursts of anger. I abide in him. I abide in him. The question is, do we want that fruit? Maybe not. But I want it. That's why we pray. Give me the fruit, God. Give me the love, God. Give me the faith. Give me that patience. Thank you, Jesus. People get on my nerves, too. <laughs> it's I'm the preacher. It doesn't mean I exist. And this. If anything, I'd be, not, I'd be around these more. I need long suffering. That's not even the same as patient. That means to suffer long. Yes, sir. That's right. To suffer long. How long should I put up with this? Go back and abide in Jesus and let him tell you. How long has Jesus been putting up with you? At least that long. <laughs> Praise God. Long suffering. Temperance. Meekness. I have the power but choose not to. Huh. That's the fruit that God is looking for. I should go without saying you're not getting it if you want it. You might as well say it with the Holy Ghost. And once you got the Holy Ghost, you got to abide. Abide. I should have named this abide. That would have made more sense. Because you got to bear fruit. You're not going to be able to win this world if you're not bearing fruit. More importantly, I might not see heaven if you're not bearing fruit. Because a husband may not come to that branch. say that. Jesus said that. Cast among fire, among men, and burn with fire. Once that branch severed, no more nutrients. But even the fruit that was on the branch got remorse. It'll wither and it'll die. I don't want to wither and die. Praise God. I want to have the love of God. Joy, peace.
peace, then no situation can determine that. Nothing can control or defeat a saint of God. You know how mad you make the devil when he throw his best at you and you still come in church <laughs> saying, blessed be the Lord God Almighty. That's why the Bible says, count it all joy when you suffer diverse temptation, knowing that the trying of your worketh Come on, somebody. Woo, praise God. That means you ought to bless them situations that come. Hallelujah. Bring on the annoying. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. There's fruits working in you. Come on, let's all stand. I'm done for the night. I told you I wasn't going to be before you long. I try. But we got to bear fruit. We have to be, we need to be fruitful. Fruitful in us. How do I overcome the work of my flesh? Abide in him. You can pray and ask for forgiveness, and that's a good start. But after you've done asking for forgiveness, come back the next morning and say, Lord, I need you. I need you. Because if I don't abide in you, that lustful pleasure is going to come up again. That anger and that wrath is going to come up again. Hallelujah, Jesus. That division and dissension is going to come. If I don't abide in you, God, I get over addictions. Now, you don't need an AA program or this, this and that. You need to abide in Jesus. It comes back to getting old-fashioned prayer. God, I need thee. Every hour, oh God, I need thee. I need to abide in you, oh God. I need you, oh God, so I can love my family and my children. I need you, oh God, so I can have patience sometimes. I don't want to be just nice and be fake, God. I want to be kind to people, God. I want to treat people like their family, oh God, but my flesh don't want to do it. I can't do it in my flesh, oh God. God, give me your character, Jesus. God, give me your heart, Jesus. God, give me your mind, oh God. For this old stinking flesh, oh God. Oh God, but if I can abide in you, Lord Jesus, and you abide in me. That fruit that I need, oh God, will grow from these limbs, oh God. And this dark and dying world will be able to see, oh God, your works and glorify you, oh God. Hallelujah. Come on, every hand lifted. If you want the fruit tonight, let's ask him and he'll give it to you liberally. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, you put us in a dark and dying world, Jesus. This world is full of sin, oh God. It's full of toxic ways and attitudes and behaviors, oh God. It's full of all of the works of the flesh, Lord God. But you placed us in here, Lord God. We thank you for calling us out of that darkness, Lord, and into your marvelous light, Lord. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you would forgive us, Lord God, of working and operating out of our flesh, oh God. Forgive us, Lord Jesus, oh God, for trying to conjure up oh, what only you can do, oh God. And I pray here tonight, Lord God, that every branch that's not bearing fruit, Lord God, uh, would be full of your Holy Ghost, Lord God. Uh, that that fruit of love would begin to grow in them, oh God. And that fruit, oh God, of joy would begin to grow, oh God. And that fruit of peace would begin to grow, Lord God. Uh, let it grow, Lord God. Uh, for you said it, and we believe in God, we can do nothing without you, oh God. Uh, we're unproductive without you, Lord God. Uh, Lord, we need you tonight, Lord God. Help us to have your mind, oh God. Help us to love, oh God. Help us to have patience, oh God. Help us to be kind, oh God. Help us to be gentle, oh God. Help us to have temperance, oh God. Help us to have joy, oh God. Help us to have peace, oh God. Help us to have faith, Lord God. We're not coming to you tonight for provision, Lord God. We just want to abide in you, oh God. Abide in you, Lord God. I pray tonight that you draw nigh unto us, oh God. As we draw nigh unto you, Jesus, oh God. We put this flesh on the altar, oh God, that you might live through us, oh God. We mortify the deeds of this body, oh God, that you might be exalted, oh God. Live through us, oh God. Work through it in us, oh God. Help us, Lord, to forgive. To forget and to relinquish, oh God.
We need you, oh God. We 